These are the best settings for shooting video on your iPhone. And I share a setting that you have to change. I literally ruined one of my videos because I didn't change this. And when you get your iPhone, it's automatically turned on. We gotta turn that off. So let's get right into it. You gotta just press record. Hey guys, my name is Noel Molt with Think Media. Now we're gonna jump right into the settings app and then you're gonna scroll down. You're gonna go to the camera app. This is gonna be way down here. We're gonna hit camera. And at the very top, we see format. So we're gonna go ahead and open up formats and we have two different modes. The first is high efficiency and you have most compatible. I recommend just leaving it on high efficiency. Plus, if you're gonna be shooting in 4K at 60 frames per second or slow motion at 240 frames per second, I'll explain all that stuff later. Uh, it's gonna automatically switch into high efficiency. Also, if you're shooting in cinematic video, this is all gonna be using the high efficiency and this is gonna save you the most amount of space. And if you're shooting YouTube videos and shooting a lot of videos, you wanna save space on your iPhones because they just fill up really, really fast. I'm gonna skip over all the photo options today. So we're gonna look at Apple ProRes. Now you could leave this on or turn it off. I'll show you if you turn it on and you go into your camera app and you go to video mode, you are gonna see a ProRes option up here we could turn that on and you can see that ProRes is now on, but I'm gonna turn that off. I do not recommend shooting in ProRes, so I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that off. And the reason is it just takes up so much space and the amount of quality, you do get a better quality video out of it, but it's just not worth it. You can see down here that if you film for one minute of 10-bit HDR ProRes in 4K, it's gonna cost you six gigabytes. That means if you shoot a 20-minute YouTube video, which is very realistic to get 20 minutes of footage, that's gonna be 120 gigabytes just for that one video. So unless you wanna try and shoot a movie, then you can use Apple ProRes, but we're gonna go ahead and just leave that off so we don't ever accidentally shoot in ProRes. Then we're gonna go ahead and click into record video. Now I shoot all my YouTube videos in 4K. This allows me to crop in, or if I need to stabilize a shot, that's gonna crop in a little bit too. I still get a really high quality video out of my phone. I shoot my stuff at 24 frames per second. A lot of people shoot at 30 frames per second, so you can do whatever you want. I just like to shoot mine at 24 frames per second. And also there's a way to change this very easily later inside the camera app, so stay tuned for that. I'll show you a little shortcut on how to change that when you're out there filming. If you're in a country that you uses the PAL format, so you can go ahead and turn that on and you can see all the different options that you're gonna have there if you're in a country that uses that. Now, HDR video, I think this is automatically turned on and long story short, you wanna go ahead and turn this off. When this is turned on and you're filming, it's gonna look beautiful, but when you upload it to YouTube, it's gonna look way overexposed if you're watching it on a monitor that is not HDR. Most of us do not have HDR monitors right now, maybe in the future we will, but right now most of us are just editing on regular SDR screens, and so it's gonna look completely weird, and then you have to convert it inside of Final Cut Pro, and it's just a big hassle. Now, even when you turn this off, you're still gonna get the beautiful highlights, it's still gonna capture all that, and it's still gonna use the technology and make it look like it's HDR, but this is just gonna save you a step in editing so you don't have to convert all the footage because that's just a pain. For auto FPS, I just have this turned off. This way it doesn't change the frame rate in a low light situation. That's kind of what that does. Down here, we have a lock camera. And I actually like to turn this on. And this is one of those features that ruined my video. Basically, this is turned off and you're shooting video on the 3X mode and you try and focus on something that it can't focus on, it will automatically switch to that macro lens. And then when you go back to the 3X zoom, there's this weird shift and everything just looks really weird and jumpy. So I like to lock this and that way when you're filming, it's going to lock it out. So if you try and focus on something that it normally would use the macro lens, it's not going to do that. It's not gonna give you that weird jump when you're filming. Now this is a feature that actually ruined one of my videos because I was trying to shoot on the wide angle lens, which gives you the most amount of light and it just looks the best. But because I was a little bit too close, it automatically switched to the ultra wide lens, which uses that macro and everything just looked really bad. It was super grainy and it just looked digitally zoomed in because it was. And so I definitely recommend turning that on. So when you're filming, that never happens to you because that just sucks. <laughs> All right, we are going to go back out. Now for record slow motion, there's two different options. You have 240 frames per second, 
Basically, that's just gonna mean it's more slow motion than 120. So I just like to leave it on at 240. Volume up for burst, I have turned off. Uh, QR codes I have turned on and detected test, I have that turned on. Now for composition, this is where stuff gets good. We have the grid. I like to leave this on and I'll show you why. Basically, if you go into your camera app and you go into video mode, you're gonna see these lines on the screen and that is your grid. And this just makes it easier to kind of center up your shots, get good framing. This is called the rule of thirds. And so this is what you typically see on a camera is you can turn on the grid. And so I like to leave that on, especially for shooting video because that is really helpful. Mirror front camera, I have turned off. That way when I shoot on my front camera, it's not mirrored, it's just shot you know, the correct way. Some people do like to turn that on if you're recording videos on Snapchat or Instagram and you like how it mirrors you, it kind of looks like a mirror on your phone, then you'd want to turn that on. View outside the frame doesn't have to do with video, it's a photo feature, but I like to leave that on as well. Down at the bottom, we have lens correction turned on. And then for auto macro, we have that turned off. I was messing with it earlier, so I had it turned on, but we're gonna turn that off. For me, that was kind of an annoying feature. If I wanted to take a video and I was trying to get a shot of something up close, but using that wide lens, oftentimes it would automatically switch to ultra wide, the macro lens, and uh, I didn't want it to do that. I would just jump back and forth and it did not look very good in my videos. So I turned this off. If you wanna use the macro mode, what you're gonna do is go to the 0.5 and use that lens. I'll show you how to do that. For example, right here, I'm getting a close-up shot, but this is just on my wide lens. As I get closer and closer, it's out of focus. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this 0.5. This is gonna turn on my macro mode. Now I can get, oh my goodness, look how dirty that iPad cover is, but hey, look how close and macro shot, pretty cool. And so that's how you can turn on the macro shot automatically. To go back to your normal wide lens, you can hit the one X. And if you wanna zoom in, you can hit three X and that is going to give you that telephoto lens. For YouTube videos, I like to shoot everything on this video feature, but if you wanna go into cinematic mode, this is going to try and blur out the background. And sometimes it looks really good, sometimes it doesn't. And so it's hit or miss for me. That's why I like to just stick on video mode instead of cinematic mode. And also keep in mind when you're shooting in cinematic mode, it can only record up to 1080. You cannot shoot in 4K. So I like to shoot my stuff in 4K in just the regular video mode. If you wanna shoot slow motion, you can go over to slow motion and then in the top right corner, you can see it's an HD 240 like we selected. But if you wanna change that really easily in that top right corner, you can just click the 240 and now it's in 120. So if it's a low light situation, I recommend going in 120 versus 240. And at the far left end, we have time lapse and you can set up your time lapse right here and just hit record by pressing that red button. Now back in the video mode, you can still change your frame rate like I mentioned earlier, just like what we did with the slow motion. So if I wanna hit 24, I can change this to 30. If I hit it again, this is going to go to 60. Now I recommend 4K 60 frames per second for most of your slow motion. This is gonna be the best quality because you still get 4K and you can still slow down 60 frames per second to about 40% if you're shooting in 24 frames per second. And you get some really cool 40% slow motion if you're shooting in 4K 60 frames per second. Now, if you wanna change from 4K to 1080 really quickly without going into the app, all you have to do is click that 4K button and that's gonna change it to HD. And then we can select our frame rate by changing it there. Now we're shooting in HD at 30 frames per second and we didn't even have to go into the settings app. As far as exposure settings go for YouTube videos and online content, I like it to just automatically adjust. All you have to do is tap the screen on where you want it to focus and where you want it to expose. And then it's just automatically gonna do its thing and that's how I like to use it. But if you want to change it, what you can do is tap on the screen. If you pull down on the right side of that square, you're able to darken the image or you can brighten the image, kind of manually adjust it like that. Now, if you wanna lock it, all you have to do is hold down your finger and it is going to lock. Now we see a sign up here that says AE, which means auto exposure and AF, auto focus lock. So the exposure and the focus are going to be locked in. And if you want to undo that, just go ahead and tap the screen again, and it's back into your fully automatic settings. Now I've seen some people online tell people that if they wanna record a quick video, they just have to hold down the photo option like this, and you can start shooting video. Though that's pretty cool, it's not the best thing you want to do, and I don't recommend doing this for your YouTube videos. And here is the reason why. If you go back into your settings under record video, you're gonna see that quick take video, which is what we just did. That's called the quick take video. That's always gonna record in 1080 HD at 30 frames per second. So if you're shooting everything in 4K at 24 frames per second, and you do you know little shots like that, for some reason, you know, you're gonna have different frame rates, and that's gonna be a lower quality. So I definitely just recommend going to the video feature 
and then hitting record under video. If you're using your iPhone to shoot YouTube videos, I recommend using the back camera instead of the front camera, just because it's so much better. And so there's a few different ways that you can actually monitor yourself on this back camera. So click on the screen, check out that video. It's gonna help you guys out a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video.